Hey friends, Cloudbart here. Time for another one minute identity and access management lesson. In previous videos, you may have heard me talking about using tags, such as like an EC2 instance tag to identify resources, but then also being able to use them as a way of identifying permission scenarios based on the tags that a particular resource might have. Well, did you know <laughs> resource tagging is available for IAM users as well? So this means that when we create users, we can also give them a tag value and that can control what permissions that user might be able to affect on other resources. And also we can control what other permissions might be granted against that resource for the user itself. <laughs> so we got resource tags all over the place and we can use them to identify and qualify conditions in a number of useful scenarios. So let's take a few minutes here in this video and talk about a couple of scenarios in which this might work. So heading on over to the management console, let's start off first with a scenario in which I want to allow administrators to be able to delete users, but only under a specific scenario. So here I am using uh, the allow IAM delete user action against any resource as long as the resource has been tagged with a key named status. So that would be the tag name and then has a value of terminated. So if you took a look at an IAM user, like here I have my little demo user and look at their tags, here you can see that status tag is currently set to active. This means that you wouldn't be able to delete that user based on that policy because the tag is currently inaccurate. So I could go in here, set this to terminated, save those changes, and now this user would be able to be deleted based on the permissions in that policy. Now, as you might imagine, friends, being able to attach tags like this could have some far-reaching effects. If I can just go through here willy-nilly and attach this inactive status or change it, then it definitely grants uh, the ability to cause some problems with our environment. So as you might imagine, looking at the types of tags that you might be able to define is important to keep it consistent, but then also deciding whether or not someone is specifically allowed to designate that terminated tag. So here we have a policy which controls what sort of tags I can use. The action is tag user. And in this condition, we're actually saying that they're only allowed to create the status tag with one of these three statuses. So these are the supported values. It could be active, suspended, or terminated. So this would be the kind of policy that you would attach to an IAM admin, someone who has permissions to manage the status of those employees. And it would work in conjunction with someone else who might have the permission to actually go through and clean up and delete the user. Or maybe it's a Lambda function that performs this delete process for you. And as a safeguard, you're adding this tagging condition on top of it so that the Lambda function has an additional qualifier and something that maybe is based on your process that you're using internally to control the status of terminated accounts. So a lot of possibilities there. One of the final scenarios might have to do with whether or not the admin is personally tagged with a specific value. So for example, you want to allow developers to delete instances, but only if the instance is a developer resource and only if that user is a developer themselves. So imagine that I had this EC2 instance and as a part of its tags, I have attached the dev resource key. So this is a tag key that has that specific name dev resource. And if I wanted to allow this specific user to be able to delete them, I would have to go into their tags and give them the dev resource tag as well. By adding that, it allows us to use an another conditional uh, qualifier known as the principal tag. And I have an example of that here as well. So the principal tag example here says that I am allowing the stop and start instances actions for any EC2 instances, as long as the instance has a resource tag of dev resource, and also the principal tag has a matching value there. So we would do principal tag dev resource here as well. And that would ensure then that the instance has to be tagged and the identifier uh, on the principal, the tag for the user making that command also has that same matching tag. And so in the end, friends, remember that tagging is not just for AWS resources directly, or maybe remember that an IAM user is also an AWS resource, and that gives us powerful tag controls over what that user might be able to interact with and the changes that might be able to be made to that user. And of course, if we're gonna depend on tags, as you've heard me say before, you gotta protect what sort of tags are supported and what sort of syntax and who's allowed to attach those tags as well. So hopefully down the road, friends, this gives you another tool in your arsenal of how to create dynamic security policies and apply the right levels of context um, and implementation to get the effects you're looking for in your IAM security policies. See you next time.